So AC Valhalla is now just three weeks away, and it seems as if we've seen the majority of the information we're going to get about the game before release, so now we know a fair bit about it, I thought I'd put together a list of sort of ups and downs so far. Five things I like, and five things I don't. And don't get me wrong, I'm still very hyped for the game, and if you disagree with any of these things, whether it be something that I like, or something that I don't like, that's totally fine, and you can drop a comment letting me know why. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So starting off with something I am absolutely ecstatic about, that is Valhalla's modern day. And I know I've said this a million times before on a million different videos, which to be honest probably tells me I should stop making the same AC top 5s with slight differences each time. But yeah, I love the modern day, it's as important as the ancestor story is, because it helps give the game some form of connection to one another, and since the modern day stopped being important in 2013, the games feel far more separated than they did originally, as opposed to being one overarching narrative. For the first time in 8 years, the modern day is important again, and it's taking risks, and it's being made a key component of the game, and that's what the modern day always should be. And if you can have an Assassin's Creed game where removing the modern day makes no difference, or even makes the game more enjoyable, you're never going to have an AC game on the level of the classic games. Even if the modern day was bad, and I'm sure it would be brilliant, it's just nice to see something finally being done with it again. I really miss after every AC wondering where this story would go, as opposed to simply what setting we'd see next with little to no pre-established connection to that game. And while this is Layla's last game, I really hope this is a sign of Ubisoft moving forward with the modern day, and finally seeing it as the backbone of the series that it is, rather than a burden. So something that I'm not huge on, so far, is the combat. The reason this is lower on the list is because from what I've heard, it feels better than it looks, and issues I have with it could be ironed out. And right now, UB are probably working on a day one patch, and they've probably heard about people's issues with the combat, mainly the weight of it. Like, sometimes dodges just look too wide, and being able to spart and kick somebody into orbit is never going to feel like the weighty, crunchy system we were promised. And the reason I say it can be fixed is because I remember Origins having those same issues with dodges being too long, and that got fixed. But either way, even if that is fixed, I'm just not really big on this style of combat. I think it's great that enemies are nowhere near as spongy as they were in Odyssey, or even Origins for that matter, but as I say, it's just not the type of combat I'm a fan of, especially for an Assassin's Creed game. I want to feel like an assassin, and I want to have the efficiency and the speed of one, and being a lumbering viking with a skill wheel packed with the might of the gods simply doesn't do that for me. Especially when it's this hitbox based combat system that just feels very loose, but with none of the power or efficiency of an assassin. It's far from a unity or a brotherhood combat system, which I'd much prefer, but hopefully they can at least iron some of those issues out. So something that I really love is the settlement system. It's something we've seen more of recently, and Raven's Thought looks to be the most in-depth safe house, or not safe house, like base, we've ever had in an AC game, which I really like. I love Monterigioni, and I feel as if the homestead and the cafe theatre are two of the better features in their respective games, and the settlement is like those, but on a much, much larger scale with so much more, and it's much more heavily ingrained in the narrative. Every citizen has their own name, job, house, and will live and work around the clock, regardless of whether you're at camp or not. Like, the fact that life goes on and new things are going to be built and new settlers will arrive as you're away, is so amazing to me. And it's cool to have this place where you can speak to presumably most of your allies. The issue with a game like Odyssey is you have all of these people dotted around a massive world, and say you really like, I don't know, Marcos, right? You just love Marcos. I'll give you something to cry about in a minute, you dirty nonce case. He's an amazingly well-written character you just want to talk to, and you can't really do that. You can't find all of these characters that you've come across on your journey. And in Valhalla, we'll have characters we actually care about, and we'll have somewhere to find and interact with them. And in all, I love what we've seen of the settlement. Now, this was a bit of a predictable one, and that's facial animations. I can't lie, never exactly been a strong suit for Ubisoft, but the facial animations in Valhalla look especially janky. I've seen a lot of people take screenshots from the deep dive trailer and say that it's fixed now because they look good in that trailer, but in the actual hour long demo we saw, they don't. They don't still look that good, and this is Ubisoft we're talking about, a company infamous for making their games simply look better in trailers. The scenes in the deep dive trailer all look fairly significant, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's mocap footage, and then the in-game dialogue still has that jank. 
Generally, I'm not a fan of conversations in the RPG games because they all feel so unnatural. The way people's facial expressions don't match their body language or emotions and they just sort of stand soullessly. The big gaps between sentences and the way it feels like a lot of the actors didn't know the context of the scene or what their character is meant to be portraying. They all just feel super awkward and really take away of the immersion of what otherwise could be really great scenes. So number three is an up and a down, and that's England. I'll explain why. England is great. The finest country on earth, some may say, and we've seen some absolutely lovely screenshots of England, and I think the team at Montreal 3 have done an absolutely incredible job of recreating it. The issue isn't England itself, but that it's simply a bad Assassin's Creed setting, in the 9th century specifically. You have this series, right, where parkour is one of its key elements. Like, if you were to ask someone on the street what they know about AC, they'd probably bring up parkour. AC is at its very best when you're traversing immersive, dense urban environments where parkour is a viable way of travelling. Here, you've got sort of a compromise between size and quality. I'd say Odyssey goes all in on size and leaves quality completely by the wayside, and then Valhalla is big, but it's also quite nice. But what would be ideal is density, rather than size, like another Paris, like a game set in a city again. Go for Golden Age Amsterdam, Warsaw. Warsaw, not Warsaw, that'd be fucking garish. Point is, for an Assassin's Creed game, you need a city or cities, an environment that's fun to traverse and makes you feel like an assassin. I don't want just hills and countrysides, as lush as they may be, like I definitely appreciate this world just as a gamer, like I'm absolutely not taking credit away from the team for making a stunning world, but as an Assassin's Creed fan, it's just not ideal, and that takes us perfectly onto number two. Right, let's be honest, since moving to the Anvil Next 2.0, the traversal in Assassin's Creed has been kind of awful. Like, we went from Unity at the start of the gen, which, you know, was flawed, sure, but was very innovative, and actually encouraged parkour to know the parkour being totally secondary and completely shallow. Going for something more accessible after Unity had a bit of a learning curve? Sure, but it's like keeping the training wheels on your bike when you're gonna do the Tour de France. For the purpose of Assassin's Creed, a series which from the get-go encourages you to use parkour, to use your environment and be creative with it to make for a fun escape or a more efficient way of travelling, to now only have parkour so you can hold down A and climb viewpoints, that's just really disappointing. And while some issues on this list can be fixed or improved, this is an issue with this version of the engine, which I'm simply not a fan of. As much as I like a lot of the stuff in this game, the traversal is just bad. On the other side of the coin though, and this is really the most important thing I feel in any AC game that it needs to nail, that's the narrative. I realise that basically every video I do, I find myself incessantly calling Darby McDevitt a god among men and the most flawless writer to ever live but I'm not wrong, am I? The standard Ottoman hook blade has two parts, you see. The hook and the blade. I'm expecting Eivor to be a great protagonist given that they have a fixed personality and can actually drive the narrative forward with their character as opposed to just sort of doing things. And as well, I like that there's going to be so many additions and payoffs in regards to lore. Like the fact we can go back to Hytham at the Bureau and learn lore bits is going to be so cool. And this game is at such a crucial point in time where Valhalla is surely going to add so much to the mythology of assassins and Templars, and going forward from here, I'd expect there to be some threads maybe left untied that could be amended in future. But I think it'll also tie some up, like since Darby created sages, I kind of think we could see them become important again. Maybe it'll even be confirmed that like Al Mulim actually is a sage, like just the fact we can do this again, like just theorise about AC lore and what's being done with it, is so great, and it's why I love Assassin's Creed, this fleshed out universe, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see what Big Man Darby gives us. So number one is another one that I've doubled up, because I think it's far more complicated than Valhalla is an Assassin's Creed game, or it's not. Like, people have been very quick to say, well, it's got hidden blades and assassins, and therefore it's an AC game. And on the other hand, it's a derivative RPG, so it's definitely not. And it's not really that easy, because I think both sides make decent points. There's some great stuff in here that's really nice to see, for example the Bureau, a story that's bound to be crucial in the grand scheme of things for Templars and Assassins, social stealth, that one assassination from the deep dive trailer, which is the coolest thing we've seen from AC in six whole years. Like, the game isn't devoid of the soul of Assassin's Creed, it's there, it's devoid of the backbone. It's devoid of working in the dark to serve the light. You're a mad, nutty Viking with a reputation that spans so far 
kings will come and seek you out. And that's what you are first and foremost, a viking. And that's what the gameplay is centered around, being a viking raider rather than an assassin. And that's reflected in the combat, traversal, the actual focus and mission design of the game, seemingly being based around bold conquest as opposed to slow political maneuvers and working in the shadows. The way I feel about Valhalla is it's trying to be a great viking game, a great historical RPG, and also a great Assassin's Creed game. And because it's being pulled in both directions, it won't be excellent at either of those things. It might be good, but I feel like its potential is capped by the fact that the vision of this game has been clearly blurred by Ubisoft higher-ups. Like, it's a rough one, it's a game headed in the right direction, but it's still a good distance from the destination, if you get what I mean. Anyway, those are just my thoughts, as I said in the intro, just my opinion. If yours is different, that's fine. You know, as is always the case, this isn't like a definitive list, it's just mine. Let me know if you disagree, if you enjoyed, maybe leave a like, and if you didn't, maybe let me know why. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another Assassin's Creed video.